So I've come down south to this little industrial estate in this tiny little village to catch up with a guy who I met, uh, I don't know, eight, ten weeks ago now, during a shoot up a mountain in the Lake District. Well, we couldn't be further away, we are right down the other end of the country. His name is Lucas and his job is for a clothing company an outdoor clothing company to shoot all their videos. Anyway, he's a really cool guy and I wanted to catch up with him again and find out for you guys a little bit of how he got into that and what his story was. I did no photography training until after university. Basically, I, I did archaeology. I enjoyed taking pictures, uh, but didn't do anything formal until actually I did a graduate program in photojournalism, which was really helpful. Um, I did that in New York City, which was like kind of prime ground for, for shooting and learning, learning the ropes of, of cameras and stuff like that. The first day of school, the first day of classes was actually September 11th. <laughs> and, and so after, like, my, my photography teacher, um, actually, he, um, photographers in New York City, a lot of them, the news photographers, they work with scanners in their cars so they can hear what's going on anywhere in the city whenever there's, like, a story going on. You know, when the police or the fire departments are communicating, mm -hmm. they can get on that communication and, and often get there at the same time or even before the police. Uh, so he headed straight down. Um, got both of his legs shattered when the towers came down. He was in a building across the street and just got thrown across the room. So I, that class was canceled for the year. It was a two-year program. Um, after that, um, when he came back, he, he really, I think he was really kind of a sober photographer. And actually, by that time, I had gotten a little uh, burnt out by basically every assignment we had had to do with September 11th. And, it, and to me, it was just really kind of tiring having to deal with like, you know, it, it was a serious thing dealing with it myself. When I finished that program, I didn't even go into photography after that. I went back to school to, to study history, um, but then realized that I was, I was missing shooting a lot. I wish I were shooting every day, but a lot of it is administration and kind of, you know, keeping things in order and planning the shoots. Um, I think what I try to have beforehand is an idea of where it's heading and really what the main elements are. So when we met on Helvellyn, I was with this mountaintop assessor who goes up the mountain every day in the winter, you know, for a week at a time and then shifts with this other guy, whatever the weather. Um, and really to me, like the element was, you know, the, the mountain was the element, of course, that he's going up this, he knows every rock on the way up and down. He's done it so many times. Um, and then the weather a bit, but also just his personality. And I feel like you have to know those things as you're shooting so that when you're, you know, when you get to the editing side, I do all the editing as well. You're not trying to construct something out of nothing. Um, at the same time, like I'm not telling him you know, go talk to those people, be cheery, uh, don't go that way, right? I want to make sure that it, it feels honest and authentic. Mm -hmm. And that goes for any, any of the shoots that we do. Really, I think unless you have amazing models, like top class fitness models who can look amazing doing anything like Frozen and can do it again and again and still look fresh, you have to let the, you have to let the story play out in a way or else it just looks really fake. Um, and, you know, people aren't necessarily always going to be the, the best actors, but what they can be is themselves, and you want to capture that. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good mountain, it was a good mountain shoot day, I mean, which means it was really tiring. Um, I'm lugging more weight than I want to, but I'm always typically happy that I brought everything I wanted. Um, I try to keep things light, everything tries to get, you know, I try to get into a backpack. Uh, but yeah, I mean, especially the bad weather, <laughs> I think that's kind of par for the course. But I think mainly it's about getting out there and, and using the equipment you have. I mean, I didn't always have amazing equipment. I still don't have, you know, all the stuff that I would want. Uh, but you, using what you have to, and getting the best out of it and then coming out, you know, with a style that suits that.
if I have a style, I, I, I would call it dynamic. Um, I'm not always trying to get perfection. I want something interesting and that has action and that shows personality. So I typically, I always bring my stabilizer everywhere I go with me. Um, it's still kind of unwieldy, the, the Ronin M, um, and it gets heavy, but I throw a kind of a Sony, you know, A7S II on it, um, and I make it work. Sometimes someone carries it for me for, for a few steps. Um, but yeah, and I go from there. I, I don't bring too many lenses with me. Uh, you know, you can't kind of restabilize the thing on the mountain. Uh, sound, I usually use a, a little shotgun mic that I, that I throw on it. And really, I, I basically, I ask the people I'm with to do what they do best. And, you know, they typically know the mountain better than I do. And I really try not to do too much direction with, with my shoots, even when I'm out there to get particular kinds of shots. Because really, I, I want it just to be fresh and to kind of give the viewer kind of a sense of discovery. Um, that you can lose if you try to set it up too much. So I would go out with runners, climbers, bikers, um, and try to capture basically a story of a, of a day or even two days. I really like kind of overnight shoots when we're, you know, we camp out, wake up in the morning, go do more fun stuff. Uh, and I try to work with people. We, we don't have a huge budget for professional models. But basically, the policy is that the people we're shooting uh, need to know what they're doing. Uh, first of all, it's great if they know each other. So I've done a lot of shoots where I find like brothers or sisters or people who have known each other all their lives. Really works really well. Uh, and we go out and really the, the rule is for them to enjoy themselves and to challenge themselves. And really, it's whatever the weather. Um, of course, the rain does kind of limit some of the kind of shooting that we can do. Uh, my higher-ups, the creative director, really wants kind of wet imagery, muddy imagery. And so we're really, I think, I feel like that's like my role is, is really to find a way to shoot crappy weather and make it look fun. And, you know, I think as if you have the models and they're feeling excited about what they're doing, that's half the battle. Uh, but then working with what nature throws at you is, is the other half. And I never have everything I need. Um, you really can't bring all the lighting you want up you know, on a hill with you. So it's trying to work out the best that you can with, with what limited amount of equipment you have. I'm not like in the best shape all the time, but I'll really go all out when I'm out on the mountain and try to keep up with someone, try to you know, run laps around them basically to get them from all angles, to make it look like I'm an army of you know, different videographers. And also to get, you know, get that sense of a journey. When you're going up a mountain, you're moving from, you know, one place to a very different place and you I, I want them to you know the viewer to kind of feel that right to to know that there's a lot of effort going into this and that they're sticking with this person not that you know I, I feel like the one way to do it would be just to bring a tripod set it up have the person walk past me move it up the mountain set it up have the person walk past me have them you know shoot them from the back um, but I just like that doesn't excite me so much. I, I feel like, you know, you've got to stick with the person and, you know, they become kind of the, the center in, in an interesting way. And just seeing them move against the mountain, I feel, becomes really kind of magical. Right, in a way, they, they need to sell themselves as happy things, right? The thing is, like, Paramo sells waterproofs and really kind of, you know, wants their stuff to work in the worst kind of weather. Nick Wax is also kind of functions with the, you know, the idea that bad weather happens. And I think very rightly, the creative director wants to show, you know, this stuff at work in the worst conditions. Like, you know, the, you know, we shoot different brands for Nick Wax, you know, Rab, um, Patagonia, Alp Kit, you know, all, all these different brands, and, but not in a way that they would normally shoot them, which would be kind of pristine typically on, you know, kind of youthful looking models on a sunny day um, or kind of, you know, simulated rain or something like that. When you're shooting in the mountains, like at high altitude, it's, it's so easy to get amazing photography out of that. I mean, the conditions, the lighting is so, is, you know, probably a little more lighting than you would want, but everything looks so crisp, colors really pop. It's when it's the middle of the winter, especially in the UK, everything is brown. Um, 
rain is beating down, like getting some, like some warmth and color out of that is, is a real challenge. Sun in the background there, I need to go and take him to the beach. So, uh, well, we'll see you probably tomorrow.